Hello and welcome to part 13 of this 52 week series on what every web administrator needs to know to be successful in the space. My name is Scott Forsyth and today I'm covering a couple tips and a tool for managing web farms. If you develop for or you manage a web farm you probably already know how useful it is to know which server your site is being served from. Being able to obtain that information quickly greatly simplifies your troubleshooting when you do run into issues. And also I find it's useful when you want to be able to ensure that your load balancer is working as it should. For example, is it alternating between nodes if you're configured in round robin? Or is it bound to a particular instance if you're using sticky sessions? A couple years ago I wrote a simple blog post that shows how to obtain this information. And I'll include the link here. And if I just go to my blog and type in node, we see uh, web farms, how to tell which node is being served. And if I go down here, real plain and simple, do a response.write in .NET, system.environment variable. Or here's some C-sharp code if you want. And this makes the machine name available to you within the code. You have a couple options for where you can place this. Some people actually drop it right down in the bottom corner and kind of hide it. In fact, we do that for VastNet. If we go to VastNet, and right here we see some information that we just kind of tuck away in gray text. So people will do that. Sometimes people will put it in a hidden comment, or people will often write a separate tool for it. So today I want to show another tool that I've made available today on my blog that allows you to have more information available from different areas. And it looks like this. Basically, if you go to your site and go to siteserverdetails.axd, it shows you which server you're on, in this case, Web02, and what the site name is. In this case, it's Instance C. And I'll cover this in a future video podcast later this year. Uh, but basically, depending on how you set up your sites, it may be useful for you to know what the site name is. Notice if I refresh the page, notice that the server switched to Web06. So you can see the load balancing is kind of using a random algorithm in this case. So it's real clean, real simple, nothing much to it, but this information is very useful when you're troubleshooting. And notice, basically, to use it, you call your site name slash site server details dot axd. And you can drop that anywhere. For example, slash abc slash also works. So the whole path isn't what's important. It's the slash site server details dot axd that is. Okay, so let me show you how to do the install. It's really plain and simple. In fact, let me show you just in essence where this is, and it's registered in the assembly, the GAC, and it's called Site Server Details. It works for version ASP.NET version 2.0 and greater. It doesn't work for V1.1. And you can see it's just registered here. And in IS itself, up at the global level, we go to our handler mappings and site server details and basically it's just registered here so it will work for site server details .axd, no matter where you are on the server so the install itself we just go to my web log I'll include the link here and just today's post is site server details on the web farm and I just include a bit of information on it and here's the download so we grab the download and let's just save this. And what I can do, in this case, I can actually just run it from within here. I double click on the install. But if you're using user access control, uh, you may need to run it as administrator. So let's just go in here, set the server. Details extracted, however you prefer to extract it. And you might need to right click and then run as administrator. So I run this. And basically it just does three things, or four. It creates the folder, C program files, site server details. It uses your environment variable for program files. It then copies the file to it. It registers to the GAC from that location, site server details. And then it adds it to IIS. Now in this case it says it's already been added. So it doesn't hurt to run this multiple times. And it's just going to throw this exception, or this error here, which is no big deal. And it's done. And you just hit OK. So that's all there is to it. And once installed, just go to sitename.com slash socontosa.com slash siteserverdetails.axd. Well, there we go. Probably my shortest 
week so far. And next week, actually, I'll cover another way that makes this even more readily available for Fiddler and Firebug, so that you can actually tell within the header itself the information. Because the one disadvantage that you run into here is it only works if you call this page specifically. If your load balancer is alternating you between nodes, you can't necessarily tell which node is failing. And so next week, I'll cover another tool. This one is nice, though, in that it fails open. If there ever is a failure, who cares? It doesn't affect the rest of the site at all. It's only run if you call this. So there's no performance penalty whatsoever. It doesn't hurt to have it on the server. Now, it does provide some information that's available anonymously. If someone does know this path, they can obtain this information. If you have any concerns, you can do one of two things, either security through obscurity and change the name of this file to something more obscure, or you can use forms auth and password protect. Uh, wrap it in a location tag for siteserverdetails.axd if you're familiar with forms auth, and it is possible to password protect this page as well. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for tuning in, and hope to see you again next week.